Hi, this is Iris Carson, and today I'm going to walk you through the steps how to create an application for the Leap Motion. And Leap Motion is this beautiful tiny device here, which is a mo mini motion tracking device. This is kind of like Mini Kinect, if you want to think of it that way, only about, I think, 300 times more sensitive. So it will actually track even the smallest movements you do with your fingers, allowing you to create applications that are touchless and gesture based, which is really cool. I'm very excited about that. I haven't had this for a very long time and I haven't had a lot of time to play with it but I managed to get some code working and I would like to share that with you and maybe help you get started and let's see how that goes. I'm going to start off by showing a quick demonstration in case you haven't seen the device before and what it can do and then afterwards we're going to deep dive into the code and I'm going to show you how to get started. So this is the leap motion and I just have to apologize for the audio quality which is probably not as good as it was in the introduction. As you can see I kind of ran out of USB ports so I couldn't, uh, I didn't have room for my microphone as well. So we'll have to do it out. So this is the leap motion. It's really a tiny, tiny device and particularly if you look at it compared to my hand. So it's very, very small and actually the consumer device, because uh, this is a developer device, the consumer device is going to be even smaller which is really really cool and who knows maybe it's going to be wireless as well so let's have a look at the quick demonstration so basically it uses infrared light you can't see it that well there but it uses infrared light and some digital camera technique to uh, kind of capture frames of your hand of your fingers and tracking them like that it doesn't implement a skeletal model yet, but it probably will very soon. But it's still extremely accurate and it's really cool. So let's have a look at it. So I'm just going to zoom in on the screen and you can see as I start moving my hands around. Now if you see some things at the top, it's just because I'm leaning in and it seems to be registering a little bit of that. Oh yeah, so what you see at the top left is actually my hand holding the web camera. So basically, this is my hand, and when I move it around, it will actually track the fingers, as you can see. It's a little bit hard for me to coordinate. I think I'm going to switch hand, and I'm going to show it like this. So you can see them there. And it actually will track up to 10, uh, 10 points, 10 fingers, sorry. It will track up to 10 fingers. Let's have a look at the application that we will be making today. So this is the application. I hope you can see it. The screen is extremely bright. I'm going to switch hand and see if that works better. Uh, zoom out a little bit and maybe like so. Hi. So I tried showing the application by recording with the web camera and that didn't go too well because the screen was too bright. So I'm just going to record just the screen and I'm going to show it to you. So basically what you can see here, sorry about that, is actually a, a really really silly little game. You see a flower in the middle of the flower you can see how many fingers we're holding up. To the right you have the sun and the sun isn't up much uh, not much out when you are in Sweden, especially not in Gothenburg where I live. So basically you want to get rid of the clouds. And you get rid of the clouds by uh, moving the flower behind the cloud and circling around it. And you can see the gestures we're making up there. For example, if I was to do a tap gesture and so on. And after 50,000 points, the cloud will be gone. What we also have is at the bottom here, actually a mouse and this is really cool because what this helps us do is is basically we it helps us enable the leap motion as a mouse as you can see here so you can see it's actually following the flower what is even more cool is when you point two fingers and you hold them in place it'll actually trigger a click event or a click click like event which is really cool so I'm gonna show you all this and we're gonna walk through the code step by step and hopefully that'll get you started with leap motion development right so I'm um, basically been demonstrating the leap motion and I'm gonna show you some code in just a couple of minutes I have a couple of slides I want to show you just to make sure you have all the information you need to get started 
So let's have a look at a couple of slides. First of all, I completely forgot to introduce myself. My name is Iris Claesson and I'm a technical evangelist at Telerik. I am also a software developer at .NET Mentor. I am a Microsoft C Sharp MVP and a member of Microsoft Extended Experts team. I have a bunch of other titles. If you want to look them up, go for it. I am also the organizer of Sweden Pluralsight Study Group in Gothenburg, and I'm a big fan of Pluralsight. If you want to get a hold of me, and this is my information, my contact details, so don't hesitate to tweet me or email me. Uh, it might take a couple of days before I reply if I am out at conferences or something, and remember the time difference, okay? So that's fine, but don't hesitate to contact me if there's anything you're curious about. So I've shown you what a leap motion is, and in case you have a device and you want to get started, uh, or you're going to get a device, this is our specs uh, if you want to get started. And it's really good to know that it's still in beta. So the developer unit and the consumer unit are different uh, when it comes to size and weight, so the consumer is going to get an even nicer device, but still really good as is. A couple of things you want to make sure that you don't forget is you need to add the DLLs with C Sharp. You need to add the DLLs to the project and then you have to make sure that it says copy to output directory, copy all, always. If you don't do that, you're going to have problems running the application. So please, please, please remember to do that. Also remember to reference the LeapSharp.NET uh, 4.0 DLL or the latest one or whichever you're using. You have to dispose of the frame object and and remove the listener once you're closing the application otherwise you're going to run into trouble when you start the application again so just a couple of important things to keep in mind so if you're having problem with a device because sometimes you might have so just make sure that you clean the device that it's clean nothing is in the way for it and also make sure that you check out whether it's the USB cable or not. As you can see, I'm actually using a white cable here. And the reason for that is because I was having trouble with the cable that was shipped with it. I think they fixed that. But if you have an older device and an older cable, you can try with different cables. I'm basically using my cable I'm using to charge my Nokia 920 phone. Calibrate the screen and use the leap visualizer to make sure that the device is working. So just a brief story about the Leap story. Uh, hopefully I'm going to get to San Francisco later this year and do an interview with them, a small documentary more about the company. But what I've managed to find out online so far that it's a small, small startup that got a lot of venture capital and they've grown insanely fast and they're hiring and they've shipped quite a few developer units. And yeah, I, that's all I know by now. So I'll show you the demonstration. And if you're wondering where the apps are going to go, if you want to, you can have them in the Airspace store. I don't think it's mandatory. Um, anything might change at this point because they haven't started selling the device yet. They will in July. But it's just a storefront where they gather all the applications so users know where to go get uh, Leap Motion specific apps. But please remember that once this one is selling, it will work out of the box with any operating system that this one supports, which will be Mac OS, P, uh, PC, uh, sorry, <laughs> Windows, or whatever. So just just be aware of that. But sometimes you want to have like really leap motion specific applications, and those are the ones we would like. We would like they would like to have at the airspace store. I actually would like to have them in one place as well. So the available languages that exist so far are these ones: C plus plus, C sharp, Objective C, Java, Python, JavaScript, and I think there's a Ruby hack. Um, but I think they're going to add more languages as well. So don't worry if you don't see your language on the list. I'm going to show you C Sharp today, and then I will also show you JavaScript at a later point, but not today. If you're wondering how the API works, I'm going to go through it step by step so you know exactly how it works. But as for the inner workings of the device, we will never know that every little detail because I think they have patent pendings and un until the patent goes through uh, I think we're not gonna know or ev maybe even afterwards but basically this is what happens you have the leap motion and then your hand goes uh, within 
the field of view for the leap motion and it registers it. It does so by using infrared light and also a digital camera technique. Not something that's dangerous for your health or anything, uh, it's uh, completely safe. So it takes frames, so it's registering frames. I think somebody told me around 100 frames per second, which is insanely fast. And it takes kind of snapshots, bam, bam, bam. And it, it'll get you information such as you get an ID for that specific frame the timestamp, uh, number of hands, fingers, tools, gestures, and quite a few more things, uh, which you can see here uh, on this slide, which is really cool. And I'm going to show you how you can actually use that for something. So let's go and have a look at the code. Uh, we were to start. We'll start with the view. So this is just this is just a view. It's a XAML view. Uh, I hope you're familiar with XAML. Uh, it's a really cool markup language, really, really cool that I really like. And whenever you're working with uh, XAML technologies, you want to be using a design pattern called MVVM, which I have been using here. So basically, you want to have very loose coupling bef between three layers, which is the view, the view model, and the model which I'm doing a kind of a halfway implementation of that because uh, when you do a really good implementation I think if you haven't used MVVM before you'll be going like what is happening here so I've tried to make it understandable even for those that don't use MVVM so before we look at the code just quickly notice here on the right hand side you see we have added the three DLLs and if we have a look at the properties it says copy to output directory copy always and that's important and on the references we've referenced the DLL one of them so remember that or you're gonna run into problems so what we're doing here is basically we're uh, making sure that we're listening to the closing event of the application and also on, to, uh, on the click of the button. I could have used a command there, but I didn't just to keep the code very, very simple and very clean. And we're newing up a new view model. So the view model is basically, uh, it's kind of the connection between the model and the view. So that's all the logic that has to do with how the data should be shown, um, uh, which data we want to show on the view, while the view itself only only uh, handles view logic. And we're basically sending in a new controller object, a new custom listener, and a new game model. The game model is just a model with the properties for the view. And we can start off by having a look at that one. So you just have a couple of properties here, and since we're using MVVM, we want to be notified whenever the properties are changing. So we're implementing an interface called iNotify Property Change. Now, this is not something uh, that is important whenever you're working with Leap Motion. Uh, you can have this code however you want it to. What I want you to notice is the properties we have here. We have Canvas Left and Canvas Top. And we also have uh, the visibil uh, visibility, whether or not we're going to show the cloud, the score, and also a string, which is a gesture made, and also the amount of fingers. So that's it. So let's now go and have a look at the main view model. When you get started with your very first application, the very, very, very first thing you need to do is create a new controller. And you have that controller, and that controller, you can add a listener to it. Now, the listener has uh, quite a few methods, and one of those methods is actually the frame method, where it will receive the frames every time they get, uh, every time a frame is taken. So, you add the listener to the controller. And I'm going to show you 